I'm Taj Nayan. I like to travel, and it's the distances and differences that keeps me coming back for more. There's nothing more adventurous than visiting other countries and embracing the culture. I'm on the search for the Caribbean's best islands, and I think I've found just the one. This is an Anguilla Adventure. When I think of places that are remote, I think of complete isolation, stranded in a sense. It's the fear of being alone, especially in the Caribbean, that drives me to chase exactly that. Solace. There's one place in particular that you'd be surprised many have never heard of. A country only 16 miles long and 3 miles wide, with a population only around 15,000, it's a floating diamond in the British West Indies. That's right, some call it Anguilla, Anguilla, Angola, or Angola, which is in Africa by the way, but we'll get more into that later. This God's Grace country is located directly north of St. Martin that can be reached by a short 20 minute ferry ride or only a few select airlines that will fly you here. You guessed it. Today, we're in Anguilla. Let's go. Stacked with 33 beaches and no corporate restaurants that many other islands have been invaded by, there's a reason why Anguilla is known as the culinary capital of the Caribbean. Not to mention the people, warm, friendly, relaxed, and always smiling. For most people who make it here looking for sun, sand, and relaxation, the locals do not take this for granted. My wife Jackie and I started our journey on what's deemed the number one beach in the entire Caribbean, Shoal Bay. Located on the east end, this place is straight out of a dream. Mostly empty, quiet, but picturesque like no other beach I've ever seen. Pristine white sands with glass-like intense turquoise waters and beautiful reefs, you feel like you're in a James Bond movie escaping to a hideaway. If you're looking for tranquility, you'll most likely end up here, Zemi Beach House, a Thailand-inspired resort with the Zen atmosphere. Upon arrival, you are greeted with cold towels and a soothing rum punch, an island staple. That's so good. It'll make you forget you traveled all this way, and man, you know I love rum. You're not in Anguilla until you have a rum punch, right? We took a golf cart around and lounged under some palms snacking on some sushi before checking into our suite, the celebration room. A spacious two-level suite equipped with everything you could imagine, a mini bar, views from every direction out to Shoal Bay, and a rooftop terrace with a pool for a complete and private bird's eye view. You'd be wrong to think we didn't celebrate. This calls for champagne and getting toasted by the sun. It's hot and windy. This property looks and feels like a total retreat. When you're visiting Zemi Beach House, you're truly here looking for an escape from the normal everyday hustle and bustle most of us are running away from. I know I am. So bay, baby. For dinner, you'll wanna stop by 20 Knots, where they have some really good pizza and green tofu curry. Not to mention the amazing soft bread and garlic aioli they give before your meal arrives. Johnny Cake served with olive oil and balsamic pair very well together. Nightlife is almost non-existent on this side of town, but fear not. If there's one thing you have to do in Anguilla, it's to stumble across a rum room at Zemi. You won't regret it. My eyebrows were practically touching my hairline when I saw this room full of just rum. Just look at it. A pirate's dream come true. With many different varieties of aged rum across the Caribbean, I decided to go with the Pirates of the Caribbean tasting hosted by Princess. She really knows her rum. So you have Martinique, Clement 10, that's aged 10 years in a bourbon barrel. The French, they only use fresh pressed sugarcane juice, whereas the English and the Spanish, they use the byproducts of sugarcane, which is molasses, so virgin sugarcane honey. You have Eldorado 21 in front of you. That one is aged 21 years. The base of that one is Demerara sugar. That sugar is originated from um, Guyana. It's brown sugar, not your typical brown sugar, but brown sugar. And you have Appleton 21, aged 21 years, American oak barrels. That one has a little spice to it, a little bite. 
if you like spicy it's down your eye up here, that, that right there, right down in your alley. The Plantation 20th Anniversary, that one is aged 12 years, it's from Barbados, so it's aged 10 years in American oak and they flew it to France to finish it off in French oak barrels. We have Santa Teresa 1796 from Venezuela, this is a blend rum, so they use different rums up to the age of 35 years. It's aging bourbon barrels, finished in Spanish sherry barrels. The base of that one is molasses. We have Guadeloupe rum, French influence again. It's aged eight years, double barrel, bourbon and cognac barrels. We have Germans, 1931 from St. Lucia. That one is aged eight years from its bourbon and port barrel. And last but not least, we have our Havana Club Mistress Selection from Cuba. It's a triple barrel. They don't disclose the age. There you have it. The bar room is immaculate, equipped with different cocktail mixing devices and a cigar lounge. Is this heaven? Some of these rums cost upwards of $650 a shot, and some you can't even get in the States, like this Havana Club from Cuba. We were definitely stumbling back to our room. The next morning, after a cup of coffee, we had an appointment for a couple's massage at the spa. This place is everything you could imagine and more. You can see the Thailand style architecture and smell the fresh florals in the courtyard surrounded by Buddha statues. This was my first massage ever, so I needed all the enlightenment I could get. They offered us fresh hibiscus tea with cold towels and then we lounged in some hammocks to relax for our upcoming massage. There's a small tranquility pool you can cool off in as well as a relaxation area before heading into your appointment. The experience for both of us was amazing. We felt so refreshed and rejuvenated. Once the session was over, they provided us with some light fruit and refreshments before we prepared for our next stop. We called a cab and made our way east to the neighboring beach town, Island Harbor. We met a man by the docks and by boat. We took a one minute ride over to this little sandbar called Silly Key. His name is Alexander, the owner of this cool little spot where you can get fresh grilled lobster and order a rum punch. Yeah, my name's Alexander. I'm the owner of Silly Key. He took over his father's business after he passed away from cancer four and a half years ago. We really connected on that since my father is also currently having his own battle with it. He's as real as it gets. We talked about the cartel using their nearby island, Scrub Island. There's an abandoned airstrip and down plane, including a half-built resort that was left behind. <laughs> Pirates. Things tend to move slow here really slow. But that's honestly what makes this island so great. Think of it as taking your time as a form of self-care. Yeah, my dad started it back in the day. He used to do tennis sports. Like that's how I, yeah, I took over his business when I was about 16. I learned the business. He is already an old man. Not old man, but he's getting old. Yeah. You know, from yeah. my little boy, my dad was already old. My dad too, man. He was like 40, 45 when he had me, you know what I mean? So time then. Yeah, you know, my mom get 20, 30, he's already... My dad was in his mid-30s when he had me, too. I was 45, so yeah. I know LeBron James, I saw a video of him jumping off a little bit. Yeah, yeah, my cousin took him crazy. Oh, oh, really? First cousin, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw him jumping off, but I was like, well, if LeBron came here, it must be a good place. Yeah, he went, he went <laughs> played the game and came right back. Yeah. But let me tell you, from the ocean, we got the beaches and we got that, that view. And now we got the venue, I mean, they're known around the world for world-class food, like we won competition with a lot of places. Wow. A lot of Angolians go and, and win too. A lot of Angolians win. When they travel to the Caribbean and even in the States, okay. they win their dish. That's awesome. They do. But it's a small island, so it doesn't get blown. Like, people don't even know. They're like, oh, some no, Angolian. Nobody knew. Just like I was telling him earlier, when, when he tell people Anguilla, they're like, yeah. what's that? They're like, like, and oh, they, they call it Anguilla. Anguilla. Antigua. Right. Right. I was like, wrong island. Yes. And, and it's called Antigua. Right, Antigua is Antigua, and they say Antigua, and they get it mixed up with Anguilla, yeah. which they call Anguilla, Anguilla. Yeah. All kind of I hate when they call it Anguilla. Anguilla. I always say. Angola, Angola, our luggage goes up. And that's how we. When you go on St. Martin, it's small. It's normal. 30, say in like 30 years ago, here. when I was a little kid, the locals okay. owned it. They had beautiful flowers. I mean, before you get to St. Martin, you just see vibrant colors going up the mountains. All the houses are beautiful. Now they push It's out, corporate. Yeah, they pushed all the locals back up to the mountainside and they got all the waterfront, all the millionaires and billionaires that 
from, from it's crazy. Shoot. They build the hotels on the beachfront, and all you locals don't get to enjoy it because right. you get to stay back. You could swim in the clear water any time. Once you've been to Anguilla, she's always on your mind. You could wait, you could dine, you could lime in Anguilla. Anguilla, you're the queen of the We hopped back into the boat and made our way back to shore. To end the night, a rum and coke, a warm bath infused with rum salts. Is everything here infused with rum? Yo ho. Alexander and I had such a meaningful conversation that he picked us up the next day on his boat to take us around Anguilla. He really knows how to catch a fish, surprising me with the giant kingfisher he caught earlier that morning. We made our way along the coast, setting our eyes on all the limestone formations at Black Garden Bay and Limestone Bay. They even had the Kool-Aid man's face carved out by the waves. Oh yeah. Then, we stopped by Little Bay, a popular little cove where people can jump off this giant rock and have a fun day out on the water. With the small storm headed our direction, we checked out Crocus Bay next door before making our way back to Zemi. I highly recommend coasting along the north side via charter if you can, because looking at these beaches from the ocean is a perspective you should see. Alexander is one of the realest people I've met on this island and will always be a friend of mine. Respect. We spent the evening staring at the night sky as we concluded our stay at Zemi. This resort is wonderful and the staff here are beyond accommodating. I would argue that this is the best hotel on the island. It's definitely the most luxurious place we've ever stayed. It's the perfect area to start your adventure in Anguilla. Thank you, Zemi. Thank you. When you stay at Zemi Beach House, breakfast is included, and it's good. No, actually, it's great. The curried potatoes were mind-blowingly delicious, along with assortments of different breads, fresh smoothies, homemade granola bars, omelets, and fruit. It was checkout day, and we were getting ready to head eastward to Captain's Bay. This journey was quite the trek. You'll need a 4x4 to get over all the volcanic limestone, but we had just a Toyota sedan with the GPS completely in Chinese. Poor car. We parked it on the side of the road and made our way by foot on the dirt road to paradise. This place is violent, but in a beautiful way. Crashing waves with a deadly undertow that come far up the shore and that would surely drag you out to sea. We found this beach to be one of our favorites, white sands and completely isolated with serene views. The journey continues as we made our way to the West End, stopping for lunch in Sandy Ground at Roy's Bayside Grill. This establishment opened in 2004 after closing its original location in Crocus Bay, which started in 1981. It was empty, but the burgers here are killer. Huge portions and fresh cut fries were belly bloating good. You can order rum and cokes from the bar and walk out to the beach at your own convenience. This small little beach town hosts some of the most laid back businesses and boutiques on the island. The second leg of our trip brings us to the West End area of Meads Bay. Our haven for the next week was this cozy little simple studio called Turtle's Nest Resort. It's got some of the best restaurants on the island just along this stretch of beach. Also, just as the name states, there really is a turtle's nest, a sanctuary if I may. If you have deeper pockets, then the Four Seasons is another great option to stay at, especially their sunset room. To make it even better, there's two hilarious women who will come by and provide rum punches every day at 5 p.m. Hell yeah. Is this really heaven? I hope so. We ended our day by taking a nice sunset stroll on Meads. If there's one thing about Anguilla you should know, sleeping in is simply not possible. The sun is so bright that by 5 a.m. the light is burning through the blinds. I never felt groggy though, but naturally awake and ready for the day. I was able to cover more ground and sooner. Let's go. Just a couple of minutes west of Meads Bay, we made our way to the arch. It's exactly that. A large natural wonder carved out of limestone rock formations. Perfect for a photo op and some fun with the drone. 
If you're somebody who's afraid of heights, then this may not be for you. However, for me, this was recess. We continued our journey a couple minutes further to the western tip of the island. You'll end up down a long dirt road to a beautiful private beach at Blollyham Bay. A mysterious, uncelebrated place with talc-like sands where the beach comes and goes with the tide. Across the water, you'll see a smaller uninhabited key called Anguilita, a much tinier version of Anguilla. As usual, not a soul in sight except one lone fisherman. It's very common to be alone on these well-spread out beaches in Anguilla. You get to have it all to yourself. You can't beat that. The sun beats down on you like a broiler, while the wind constantly churns and stokes your skin like a fire. We were hungry, and we were thirsty for a nice cold rum punch. I know just the guy, and I know just the place. Sunshine Shack. A laid back, totally relaxed beach barbecue establishment located on Rendezvous Bay. The super soft sand, calm waters, and view of St. Martin across the water makes this place a chill paradise for lunch. You can sign your name on the many walls, tables, and chairs to leave your mark. These rum punches are good, but the barbecue is even better. Meet Garvey. I got to sit down with him for a few minutes and talk about this place and his love for Anguilla. His energy and story is amazing. Yeah, I'm Garvey Lake. Uh, I'm here on beautiful Rendezvous Bay, Anguilla. This is the beautiful Sunshine Shack. We were fortunate enough to start a beautiful business like Sunshine Shack. So, yeah, welcome to Anguilla, guys. This is us. We started on. Um, 2007, actually, to be exact, October 2007. It's a little over 14 years. Yeah, yeah. We are from the island. Yeah. To be honest, in the early humble beginnings, nobody was born with a silver spoon. No one. Yeah. All we had was our beaches, our peacefulness, you know, the space. Working in the industry for 20 plus years, I realized that, hey, you know, if we, we get enough knowledge and experience about how the thing works, you could venture out at some point, you know, ask permission, ask questions, ask for help. Don't be afraid, you know, go hard, ask for it. There's people that are willing to help you, but you gotta be willing to help yourself first, and you gotta be willing to risk it all, right? As a kid, from a kid, you gotta learn to be on island, you gotta, you know, you're a kid, mom, every day, so you gotta grab some sort of knowledge, you know what I mean? Gotta grasp some sort of knowledge. So, cooking is in our genes, not only me. Most of the people on island can cook. So, um, then to come out and do a good meal with the way I love to do it, it makes me happy to see the smiles on people's faces and then they will tell you, God, that barbecue was great. You know, those little things count, you know? And when you're at the grill and you're looking over and you see people just licking their yeah. fingers, like, yeah. you know you're doing something yeah. right. Sometimes I like, I hope they don't bite their finger off, man. I hope they don't, they came with 10, I hope they don't leave with nine, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but honestly speaking, it's just, you know, if you could be plus in someone, just eat. You can make someone happy, you win, you're a winner. When you when you get up in the morning, you're a winner. And if you could make someone happy, if you could turn someone, you know, bad day around, you're a big winner, man. You win 10 times, so I'm happy to do it. Just try to do the best you can every day. Never try to be the best, we try to do our best. You know what I mean? And that's what makes you the best. Thank you. If there is one thing that I learned from this conversation, this guy loves barbecue. Humble, kind, and down to earth. I learned some valuable things walking away from that interaction. To take the risk, asking for assistance when you need it, and remembering that majority of us aren't born with a silver spoon in our mouths. I'm grateful. There's more establishments like this, so we headed back over to Sandy Ground to check out another island staple, Elvis's. If you have an itch for sports games or are craving for burritos and nachos, then this is where you want to be. The portions are also very friendly here, and the burrito definitely had a spicy kick. You can order it wet and cheesy, which is the Elvis way. Jackie got the Veggie Nacho Supreme, which was delicious, washed down with a nice cold red stripe. 
While waiting for Elvis to arrive, a much needed siesta was needed. With the perfect backdrop of anchored boats under some palms, how can you not take a nap? When talking to Elvis, I could notice right away his cool nature and love for basketball, specifically the Boston Celtics. They happened to be playing that day too. He also mentioned that he had over 355 jerseys in his collection, hanging some of them up for game day. He loves his bling too. Well, you see, I don't wear gold, I wear silver. I love silver. I'm Elvis Fleming from Silver Lake Villa, British West Indies. I work at Elvis Beach Bar, I'm the, uh, the owner. I just got number one in the Caribbean, and I'm happy with that. I'm proud and the most popular bar in the world. Mm -hmm. We started like 207, and since then, we've gone in 15 years now, and we've been popular for the rest of the 15 years. We're doing pretty good. We had a hurricane, we had armor, we had Kobe, but right now, things are getting back to now, but I'm doing pretty good. I'm happy with what's going on. The place is doing pretty good. My staff is good. My partner is back in Maryland, but hey, Elvis here running the show. Can't complain. Things are getting back to normal. So I'm happy with that, you know. That's good. On Sundays after 4 p.m., you want to be somewhere. No, you need to be somewhere. The Dune Preserve. If you're driving down a long, quiet road and hear music in the distance, you've made it. This place hosts some of the most dynamic music scenes in Anguilla, and it's also on Rendezvous Bay. It's a pirate's true haven for a good time. I like that. A place where the breeze blows into your face just right, your spirits are automatically lifted. Not to mention the heavy-handed pours of rum. Very generous. With Driftwood's style of decor and an intimate setting, the people who are here want to be here. It truly is a Caribbean sanctuary for the soul. I came to see one man in particular. His name is Banky Banks, a legend. His raspy baritone voice reminds you of a cross between Bob Marley and Bob Dylan. Who he's actually played with, by the way. I've never heard someone play the harmonica quite like he can effortless. That doesn't just happen overnight, but over time. You can catch him hanging out behind the stage with his glass of Johnny Walker and a joint. He was happy to sit down and talk for a bit after his set was finished. He took me upstairs to a special spot decorated with the painted portrait of his mother and various art decor he's collected over the years. Ultra cool. Banky talked and reminisced about his career, ultimately settling back here to his family roots at the Dune Preserve. Yeah, they call me Banky Banks. My first passion is music, you know, I'm a musician for this. You know, music curious time, you know, and it was 14 years I was a bass player. 14 years, you know, playing the band, background vocals for guys and stuff like that. But it was 19, I had four number ones in the Caribbean. I made the album called Banky Banks Roots and Herbs. Prince of Darkness, uh, The Dreamer, Judy Calls, Hitching a Ride. And, what do you want, Inspector? You know? <laughs> and these are Caribbean uh, classic swing. I had Bob Dylan's yacht for fucking six weeks. <laughs> I met Bob Dylan here. Man. He sing, Bob Dylan. He, he, he sings one of my. He sings one of my songs. I'm not recording live. I met him here. We hung out. So I stayed right in the Caribbean. That's amazing about what happened in my life. That's a big deal, I man. Stayed. Bob Dylan. Yeah, well, so I know Bob Dylan. I mean, lots of musicians. Jimmy Buffett. All these guys come around here. So I did that. And then by the eight, early ages, I decided to get out of here. And I said, do the hard work. And I went to Europe with a small band. And a nice video tucked on my arm. Video called On the Corner, Banky Banks. On the Corner, check it out. But I already had the bump. So I came up for nine months. I had a tragedy in my life. My sister died. I slept with my mom for a while. And I went back to New York. Then I moved to New York City. So I lived, I lived in New York City for like eight and a half, nine years. You know. I worked the East Coast from Nantucket to Key West. <laughs> the Dune Preserve was always a part of my life. I was born this island. My, my parents bought this pub before I was born. So wow. I, left, I left here with this. Moment. So it's just like a family heirloom passed down and you're just carrying it on, man. That's amazing. I'm just trying to carry it on. My mom and my dad before. Back. Uh, bought this problem. When it was very easy to get, it was very cheap at the time. And yeah. You could afford it. Wow. It worked out to afford it. 
And I happen to know that this is mine. No matter what I did, I never come back and just swing the hammock and be all right. <laughs> so I came back to the US. This this really you know, brought me back to my sense and said, fuck it, I am. It's about, it's about the simple things, right? It's about life, you know, chasing that whatever dream it was. I, I don't know if I was ever chasing any shit. Always wanted to be a good songwriter. I love to write songs and I was always band guy. I mean, I tried a lot of shit, tried like a D's and the production system. They want to say you what you want, make you say what they want to say. Or tell you what to wear, what the fuck to say. Fuck them, man. Who to be with. So that's actually why I said, fuck this shit. You know, I never did. I, I always walked away from every deal that ever came to me as far as a major deal. Never signed a major deal. Always kept uh, all my rights. You never sold your soul because you wanted to keep it, man. And uh, that's the best thing I you can do. It, I brought it back here. <laughs> and you brought it back home. <laughs> That's amazing. And then I, I flipped them to my other side of life because to survive it, I had to flip them to be the contemporary artist because that's what I, if you look at this place, this is what I do now. I make songs, make music, and, and I, I, I'm a, in my mind, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I create shit. You know, I'm an art con You know, I'm not a painter, I'm not a sculptor per se, but I co-create with nature. I put shit together and I direct artists into, into the shit that I want to do. I have I mean, money. Yeah, I care about that. And I see, I see beauty in everything. All the drifts you see around here, I must have just went up and saw that I want to have that piece of this. Wow. I can do something there, every piece. And that's like one of my passions, to wake up for months and take my own Jeep and go down the beach and <laughs> let all this shit, crazy shit that people say. Fucking That's where it's done. I threw it all here. It's art, man. It's you know, uh, all broken bones and shit. And I just you know, I look at them for a couple of months and I say, all right, and do this and that. And stones. Yeah. I'll tell you what, maybe 500 years ago, pirates would love to come to shore here at the Doom Preserve, man. Hear some music, have some drinks. Oh, yeah. They won't be asking, why is the rum gone, right? Why is the rum gone? <laughs> I love that, man. I respect this man, a lot. This venue is intimate and people seem to always have a good time. I left this place feeling full of calm energy and the breeze hitting my soul. Anguilla has one of the lowest crime rates, so waking up on the beach here is not an issue. But please, don't try this at home, kids. Let's get to it. This is how you wake up in Anguilla. Today, we're exploring a beach just east of here called Long Bay. We came across what seemed to be an abandoned shack, most likely due to the damages of Hurricane Irma, which devastated the island five years ago. Just as the name states, this beach is long. Per usual, nobody in sight. We took a stroll and enjoyed the peace and quiet before heading back for lunch on Meads Bay, Leon's at Mali Ohana a beachside restaurant serving up burgers and hot wings with a side of ting, a grapefruit-infused soda that's light and refreshing. Afterwards, we came across this private cove at the end of Meads Bay to watch the sunset. This little piece of heaven really makes you feel remote. It's perfect. You think Tom Hanks would have liked this better? We lounged around until dinner time, where we had reservations at a popular spot called Straw Hat. I know I touched on Anguilla being the culinary capital of the Caribbean, but if you want a romantic dinner with a view of the beach, then you want to check out this spot, also located on Meads. Serving up coconut curry with cauliflower, or perhaps some chicken off the grill with some garlic mashed potatoes and straw cut fries. Perhaps yes. In the morning, we stepped out for a nice morning paddleboard session. The tide was calm and the heat just a tad forgiving. It's the best time of day to get out on the water. 
Anguilla is home to some of the most elite beaches in the world, and Meads Bay is no exception. Today, we have a charter booked for another island off of Anguilla. We met up with our captain and crew, Dean and Warren, operators of Janice Charters. Today's location, Prickly Pear Keys. Only a 25 minute boat ride from Sandy Ground, it's a small chain of uninhabited islands that are great for hiking, snorkeling, or just relaxing. As we started to pull up to shore, you'll see yachts and other boats pull up to anchor for a fun day on this key. We made our way around the long strip of beach before heading towards the tip of the island where you can see a smaller version of Prickly Pear. This is as private as it gets. You can also eat at the island restaurant that's only open a few hours a day. Warren happened to like the snails. I just couldn't do it. As we made our way back, we made some friends from France that we met during our trip to Prickly Pear and decided to meet up and grab food at Blanchard's Beach Shack on Meads Bay. This place has affordable fare and a wonderful view. Nachos, jerk style burgers, tacos, gazpacho to cool you down, and $5 rum punches for happy hour. And from experience, two of those will put you down for the night. We hung out in the ocean and enjoyed our time talking about the day. It's always a great thing when you make new friends on a voyage. After a quick video, it was time to say bon voyage with a small bonfire. Tu viens? For dinner, check out the only Mexican restaurant on the West End, Picante. It's good, really good. If you're itching for enchiladas, chimichangas, or quesadillas with the Dia de la Muerte vibe, this is where you wanna be. They even provide complimentary chips and salsa, and if you'd like your tortillas to be corn or flour, that's legit. For dessert, some fireworks from our balcony to cap the evening. We managed to hit 27 of the 33 beaches on this island. Just to mention a few, Cove Bay, the beautiful Mondays Bay where the popular Cap Jaluca Resort is located. We even wandered across some barren ones too like Shoal Bay West, where an unfinished resort went abandoned, but led us to a view of another beach across the limestone, Sherricks Bay. If Anguilla had to pick only one currency, it would definitely be its sands, with different shades of white, yet consistently exceptional. You can check out other places like Pelican Bay or maybe Little Harbor close by. The beauty Anguilla has to offer is endless. There's plenty of empty beaches for you to sprawl out and enjoy ultimate isolation. Take a look at Barnes Bay. Located just west of Meads, just pull out your beach blanket and simply bask in the sun. It storms here too, if you can call it that. But if it rains, it'll only last a few minutes. The locals like to call it liquid sunshine. Anguilla is one of the most majestic islands I've ever had the opportunity to visit. You never want to leave, ever. Why would I want to? I can clearly see why it's the Caribbean's best kept secret and it should stay that way. It's truly hard to compare this place to anywhere else. You just can't. It's simply paradise. The people here are happy, all the time. Every meal is nothing short of amazing and every view is cinematic. So I leave this place asking people one question. What does Anguilla mean to you? Uh, Anguilla is my island paradise. Tranquility wrapped in turquoise. And then just cool people, nice vibe. This is everything that ever happened for me great in life happened from right here. I didn't really have to go anywhere to make the magic of my life. Anguilla, <laughs> heart and soul, my boy. Cuisine to the people you meet. It's a happy place, a joyful place, and we keep it interesting. Anguilla is a Anguilla is very quiet, very tranquil, and um, it's a place that I think everybody would want to go to. You know, after you, after the hustle and bustle of the day, when you go home, you feel calm, you feel relaxed. Well, Anguilla is my home, and Anguilla means the world to me. I will go and visit other places, but when I want to go home, I'm coming home. I don't go to this place. 
But anyway, this is paradise. Angula just has something real special. I know it's a beautiful smile. She means, it means everything. You know, it's life. It's a definition of life. If I must put it that way. You know? It's a beautiful place. Lovely people. Great beaches. Welcome in. Yeah, this is my home. And it means the world. Yes. Oh, well, I was born and raised here. That's my home. I lived with my grandma when I was like, three years old. And this is my home. I love it here. Nowhere to go. To me, Angola means peace and definitely home. Uh, this home is my home. Angola means my home to me. This is part of where I enjoy the best of Angola. A good sunny day. Anguilla, you truly are the queen of the Korean. Is the head of Wall's Beach attraction? A clear mark for the queen of the Caribbean. We got white sand beaches everywhere. We got people who treat you with tender loving. You can swim in a clear water anytime. Once you've been to Anguilla, she's always on your mind. You could wine, you could dine, you could lime in Anguilla. 